uh, thank you for joining us today on this, um, our fourth In Conversation uh, discussion. Um, and today I'm delighted to welcome Tom Bridges from Arup to uh, uh, share with us hopefully some interesting, I'm sure they'll be interesting, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, if any of them are controversial, but I, I'm, I'm, get, I'm pretty much, I think pretty much guaranteed that will be interesting views about how the city comes out of um, out of COVID. Um, last last season's conversations were very much in the thick of the COVID uh, pandemic. This year, we're trying to look forward to to a to a point in time when things will be, if not back to normal, maybe a new normal, but certainly um, not the situation we've had for the last twelve months. So, um, welcome, Tom. Great to great to have you here. Um, I'm not going to sort of reel off your CV, because maybe I can give you the opportunity to do that before we start the questions. Just say a little bit about yourself, Tom. Thanks, Martin, and, and um, very grateful for, for you to invite me to, to share my views. And, and um, um, also, um, um, thanks to all those who are tuning in, either live or on the recording. Um, um, it, it's, good, it's good to have these conversations. A um, bit of background about about me, I I'm a chartered town planner and an economist. Um, my my um, I grew up in London, and my f um, my first job um, was for an organisation called London First, which is a business led organisation that um, seeks to improve and promote London as a, as as a global city. I did that for three years, and then moved to Arab, um, where I did thirteen years, half in London and and then um, half here in 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 Leeds. And then in two thousand twelve, I, I I left Arab to go and work for Leeds City Council, where I was. Was, um, the chief officer for economy and regeneration, um, um, the officer overseeing um, the city council's work around economic growth, property, regeneration, HS2, and um, the inclusive growth, um, working really closely with um, Martin Farrington, Tom Riordan, um, um, Judith Blake, um, and, and, and so on. And then I came back to Arup at the start of 2018, um, 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 and I'm now the head of our Leeds office, so we have around 400 people um, 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 here in Leeds or pre-COVID here in Leeds. Um, we've also got a small office in York that um, is rail focused that I have responsibility for, um, alongside a kind of roving national brief to advise on um, some of the big issues facing UK towns and cities. So um, um, that's me, um, and and uh, you know I must admit as someone who's worked in the field of sort of urban and city development all my professional life, studied geography and urban studies at university. I think you know whatever you think about COVID and the pandemic, and there's a lot not to like about it. Um, um, it's absolutely fascinating in terms of what it might mean for for the future of our cities and the future of Leeds. Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one trying to work out if the background uh, that you have there is virtual or, or real. Oh, it's, it's real. It, it's, um, it's real. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I am in the um, office. Yeah. yeah, because you because you just you just moved over there and we saw someone moving yeah. ahead. So we can we can see that now. But yeah. um, j maybe just tell us a bit about what 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 Arab's approach has been to um, managing the, the last 12 to 18 months. Um, I mean, clearly you're, you're in the office today. What, what how have you been uh, managing the process? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, the first thing I would say is, um, like, like many other organisations, um, well, all other organisations, really, we had to pivot very rapidly to being a predominantly office-based organisation to everyone working from home. We we're just about to embark on a big rollout of um, um, MS Teams and um, remote working technology. And there was a big project plan um, around staff engagement and training, which lasted for about six months. And what should have taken what's going to take six months had to be done in about six days and and i must admit uh you know like many organizations our, our it colleagues um worked absolute wonders um so there was that kind of rapid pivot to to to, to, to working from home um i think um I think many of our people um, sort of went into um, went into crisis management mode, um, 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 and as the pan thinking it 
the pandemic would be over by the autumn potentially um and we've had real challenges with you know um because it's not sustainable to work in that kind of crisis mode um for more than a few months so um you know the experience um the the when the pandemic hit also it, it combined with uh, you know it created some pressures on our business um um so 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 we um uh, you know unfortunately had to um make make a small number of people redundant which was you know difficult and 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 not easy but our business has kind of recovered and bounced back um pretty well actually we we we're, we're now in a position where we're sort of tentatively um returning to our offices um with social distancing so we've got much reduced um um capacity um but we've just um released a, just issued a new um policy called work unbound which is to embrace hybrid working for the future so we're saying our people we're asking our people to do t a minimum of two days in in their home office in the future but beyond that they can work when and where they like um and that's quite a radical change i think um and i think it will have some um some real positives i think it will also have some challenges um for us as 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 well so for us we won't go back to to normal we'll go back to a hybrid model and i think we're not dissimilar to many um professional services organizations in that respect that's that's really that's really interesting and um i i guess this um, this, this sort of leads me on to, on to the first of a number of questions about uh, leads specifically i mean clearly um, Arup is a big employer in the in the city, um, based on the on the on the fringes of the city centre, and as such, uh, has a a knock on. There are knock on benefits for you know having these large large employers um, in the city centre, and for, for the last twelve months that just hasn't hasn't happened. So, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the information you have on um, the effect uh, of the COVID restrictions, specifically on Leeds and specifically on. The economic health of the city centre um, and do you know how where Leeds stands in the sort of ranking list in terms of impact compared with other places in the UK? Yeah I I mean I, I, th I think I think there are um, there is data that city centre that centre for cities have produced that city centres such as Leeds um, where ha have been hit by the kind of double whammy of um, you know reduced um, retail footfall um, in terms of people coming in for their primary purpose to shop, but also the reduced office footfall and and therefore reduced sort of secondary spend or linked trips um, for, for 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 retail and 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 and, and hospitality. Um, but I think there's also evidence that Leeds um, footfall and spend is recovering quite strongly um, as a result of, 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 of reopening. For me, though, Martin, um, you know, there's been a lot of focus on retail and hospitality um, for, for understandable reasons. And, you know, I, 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 I have huge sympathy um, um, and huge admiration for everyone who's been running or, or working in retail and hospitality businesses over the last 18 months. It, it's certainly not been um, easy and the future remains uncertain. But I think the real question is what's going to be the impact, economic impact on Leeds City Centre in terms of its role as a real hub for the knowledge economy for knowledge intensive business services for science and innovation creative industries um, um, and leads and, and we've done some recent work for CEG um, the developers behind um, the temple scheme in in, in, in Leeds South Bank and also Kirkstall Forge and also um, for Leeds City Council looking at the future of the city centre and Leeds um, is this incredible Leeds City Centre has been the economic powerhouse not just of Leeds not just of Leeds City Region but also actually to some extent along with Manchester City Centre across the north of England in recent decades it's seen this concentration of knowledge intensive jobs Jobs across a range of um, 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 re the, 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 there's a there's a there's a concept of related diversity so so diverse but related sectors financial and professional services digital um, um, 
broadcast and media, um, health, government, um, 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 architecture, engineering, um, um, and um, head office functions and so on. Um, and that has been, you know, as the economy has changed, as it's become more advanced and knowledge-based, knowledge spillovers, the way people exchange knowledge has become more important. And where, whereas previously a lot of people sort of predicted the death of cities and the death of city centres with the advent of the internet and email, we'd all sit at home emailing each other. Actually, in recent decades, the opposite has happened. As the economy has become more advanced, um, those knowledge spillovers, those trust-based networks between people and organisations have become um, more, not less important. And all of that is driven by face-to-face -face, um, interaction. Um, and we've also, um, so, so the um, economist Bruce Katz of the Brookings Institution in, in the States has written about innovation districts has said, people no longer want to drive um, to their out-of-town offices and keep their ideas secret within their buildings. They want to collaborate, they want to compare, they want to compete in the hyper-caffeinated spaces between the buildings. And that has driven this phenomenal growth and success of the lead city centre economy. And the big question for me is, what will COVID break that trend? Will mass remote working break that trend? And I, I think if it does, it could pose real risks, um, not just to the city centre economy, but to the economy of the wider area as well. And I don't know what the answer to that question is. Um, um, I've got some thoughts, but for me, that's the big question, which possibly not enough focus has been um, put on to date. So going back to the, the policy that you have at Arup, the, the, the policy mm. that you have with, with, with staff in Arup, because clearly some of the sectors you've mentioned are covered by, you know, Arup has a, a number of strands to its activity and some of those are covered in what you just talked about. Um, if I understand it right, you were saying that, that, that your policy uh, says that two days, people are being asked to spend two days at home. No, to a minimum of two yes. days in their home office. In their home office, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, th that's an interesting way of doing it. So not, not two days in the office, but two days in the home office. Yeah. Um, so it's the reverse of what you might, might expect. Um, but a minimum, so maybe a maximum could be more, could be more than that. Yeah. And um, I mean, so given what you've said about the dangers of, uh, the, the potential dangers of, of home working, of the reduction in face-to-face -face interactions, particularly uh, for these, these uh, emerging economic areas of activity, um, do, do you think employers will need to change that? I mean, is that policy and, and other employers presumably have similar policies? Do you think those policies will need to change? Do you think the issue will have to be forced in the sense that actually, no, we do need people to come in. We do need to insist on people being in the office for at least three, four days a week or whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I think the aim and, and my hope is here at Arup, um, and, but also other organisations can can find a sweet spot where we get the best of both worlds, um, um, where we retain the benefits of that collaboration of those networks, of of the learning, the wider social life, the sense of community, um, the 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 innovation and creativity, which I believe is comes best from collaboration face to face. Um, um, but we also capture some of the benefits um, of more flexible working, um, which, you know, some staff prefer it. I'm not one of them. I, I, I've found I, I've not enjoyed working from home. I, you know, I've been desperate to get back in the office, but I, I others are different. Uh, some staff ha have have enjoyed working from home. Some staff, um, some colleagues, um, um, it's helped with their um, wider family and caring responsibilities, and and um, arguably it's a more inclusive way of 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 of, of operating in 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 that respect. Um, um, you know, some colleagues um, um, value not having to commute. Um, um, some colleagues, um, so, you know, um, so, 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 and, and, and as an employer, 
it potentially allows um, us to access a, a workforce across a wider area. And, and uh, as employees, um, it might make it easier for people to move house without, uh, sorry, to move job without moving um, house. Because if you don't have to commute every day, you might be willing to, to live further away from work. So I think, I think my hope is that organizations but also leads can sort of strike that right balance of, 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 of the best of both worlds. It might also have a benefit of um, breaking this sort of umbilical cord that organizations um, feel they have with London. Um, 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 I, know, I know Tom Riordan when he was seconded to do the test and trace um, 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 role um, um, later said um, he 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 did it from um, his home in Yorkshire yeah. and 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 it demonstrated you don't necessarily have to be in London to do top level jobs in government and I think the same is potentially true in the in the corporate sector so uh, in that respect I think we it could be a real boost to kind of north shoring of jobs from 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 London to some extent Leeds offers. You know, the benefits of a city ecosystem, you know, with great university, that great mix of organisations, but this access to fantastic countryside and quality of life um, um, around the city, as well as all the great green spaces in the city. So I think, I think whilst I'm a great advocate for face-to-face -face collaboration, and I think people will vote with their feet. So I think our people within Arab, most people will do more than two days a week in the office because they will benefit from coming into the office. Um, I, I can also see that the, 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 there's potential to capture some benefits. I think the other benefit is um, um, you know, um, in, 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 in the context of Leeds, the ambition of Leeds City Council to have a strong economy, but a compassionate city, I think it can help build a sort of, um, a better workplace culture, which is not less about presenteeism, yeah, um, yeah. Um, um, less about and and uh, um, and 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 is more about valuing people on their outputs, um, and um, embraces flexibility, embraces diversity. So you know, I, I'm I'm optimistic. I, I think cities are far from dead. Um, I think city centres are far from dead. I think the Leeds office market is far from dead, um, um, and and I think the evidence on the ground um, shows that. And and I'm I'm kind of optimistic we can blend the best of both worlds in the future. So um, thanks, Tom. That's a really interesting answer. So uh, I'm just thinking then. I mean, I mean, if we, if let's just for the sake of argument say that uh, we're in a period of transition as far as office working is concerned, and it will settle it will settle at some point in the future and where it settles may be different to where we were, you know, 12, 18 months ago, but it will settle. Um, we're not entirely sure of the, of where, of, of what this, of what the, the final state will be, but um, it, it's likely to be more flexible. I mean, could I turn, um, so in terms of the, if you like the office market and all that, th there is some time to think about, you know, what, 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 what firms require in terms of office space and then to adjust and, and flex accordingly in terms of the supply of office space, et cetera. But if we think about another area um, uh, that, that is obviously key to the city centre, and that's retail, I mm -hmm. think there, there's, for, for, for reasons not just related to COVID, we, we, we have seen some major changes or, and are seeing major changes. Clearly, some of the major retailers have gone uh, into liquidation in recent years. That's possibly been accelerated a bit by COVID, but it was probably on the cards anyway. I'm thinking about Arcadia Group, I'm thinking about Debenhams. Um, so th these are big pieces of real estate in the city centre that suddenly become available. Um, and we may see more of those in, in, the, in the months to come. Um, wh what do you think the city centre should, should how should it adjust to those sort of fairly sudden uh, impacts that suddenly overnight almost Debenhams isn't there, You've got a large, uh, a large department store building with no obvious use. That one, incidentally, has planning permission in to uh, become student flats with retail on the ground floor. What are your thoughts on that, Tom? So, um, the first thing I'd say, Martin, is um, you know, 
well, so there's clearly this shift from um, bricks to clicks, which was happening before COVID, but has been accelerated massively because of COVID. Um, um, you know, th there are still some signs of optimism about retail um, in, 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 in Leeds city centre. Um, um, we're, we're, you know, whilst we're seeing some closures, we're also seeing some occupiers um, 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 moving in and wanting a presence in a successful and vibrant city centre um, such, as, such as Leeds. Outside the city centre, incidentally, I think the picture is more mixed. Um, you know, some local centres where there's a high proportion of at people who who have been able to work from home have done pretty well actually in yeah. the last yeah, 18 months yeah. others yeah. have done a lot less well and i think we could see a widening polarization of of local centers but so 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 you know again let's not write off city center retail but i think it's fair to say it's interesting reflecting back to the last major economic shock um, in Leeds, the 2007 and 8 crash, and how it was retail, you know, the big iconic schemes that were brought forward to regenerate um, the city centre included two major retail developments, Trinity Leeds um, and Victoria, as well as the arena, as well as some big office schemes such as Wellington Place. And, and I think everyone would say Leeds city centre has been a better place for, for those schemes. But it is fair to say that, you know, big retail schemes won't be the future um, model of development um, of, of, of Leeds City Centre and you know, the future is probably more of a mixed use um, 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 future. I think um, you know with, with closures um, you know we are going to need to be fleet of foot in, in the way spaces are adapted um, and potentially reused um, potentially in terms of temporary uses, pop-up workspaces, pop-up um, 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 shops. But then more permanently, we are going to see um, changes of use. And I think we might see a more diverse mix of uses in, 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 in the city centre. The role of residential is really interesting um, um, here. Um, I think um, after a period of um, you know, a long period of kind of underperformance of, of the Leeds city centre development market, partly because of a hangover of some of the poor quality schemes and some of the um, unhelpful and at times inaccurate newspaper headlines of the late 90s, um, Leeds has struggled to see the same volumes of city centre res residential development as, as perhaps some competing cities. Of course, it's not just about quantity, it's also about quality. Um, and, and, um, and, and that's important to recognise. But I think it's clear that's beginning to change. And we've now got some really good quality um, residential schemes that have completed or, or, or are on, on, on site um, um, currently. And to some extent, those are you know the, the, that 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 market's been driven partly by um, improvements in quality of place, you know, um, um, and improvements in 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 in, in public realm. Um, I think, I think the I think there is a risk to all cities, including Leeds, of poor quality re, um, residential conversions, particularly under permitted development rights. I think. The scale of student accommodation um, we're seeing in the city centre is worthy of debate. Is what is 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 what I would say. Um, is that the quality or the quantity? Um, it's probably uh, I, it's probably both. I I I I I I would say, and but it, it also needs to sort of recognise that the ability to control that scale through the planning system is possibly limited um, 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 as well. And I, I can see benefits of 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 of, of that sort of um, development. Um, you know, um, you know, the universities and students um, who are who are a much much maligned group at the moment who've not had an easy time over the last um, eighteen months. I think bring so much that's positive to the city. Um, um, but um, you know, I I I I think the 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 future sort of nature of city centre residential development is is a fast evolving topic, and something we should all 
perhaps reflect on and think about the the kind of positive and proactive tools that we can have to work with developers to bring forward good quality schemes and a good mix of schemes as well, um, which might be uh, in in terms of um, you know the 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 quality of place, the availability of out outdoor space, the mix in terms of the size, type, tenure of homes. Um, um, you know the the question about um, affordability, um, 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 as uh, as 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 well. So, you know, I, I think it's a really interesting and generally quite a positive time for the residential market. Um, but um, you know, it, it's 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 a very sort of live issue, um, um, and. It's also interesting when we think about how planning policy has affected kind of um, retail areas, because, you know, traditionally, I think planning policy has sought to protect retail calls for retail. It's been the kind of prime frontages um, um, policy. I wonder whether we're going to need to review that and, and, and see planning policy encourage perhaps a more diverse mix of users. In, in, in our area as think about the role of workspace, think about um, food and drink. Um, um, I noticed um, 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 in Gloucester, the, the, the university had, uh, had bought one of the Debenhams stores, which I thought was, 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 was an interesting move. So, you know, the role of education, health, public services in some of these spaces. So um, I don't think there's a single answer, but I think the being fleet of foot, um, encouraging a diverse mix of users, um, but also trying to support quality development and quality of place are going to be critical. I mean, Linda, Linda Kitchen has just put something in the chat here, which um, you know relates in particular to permitted development rights. And I guess um, you know, would, is the is the issue here that the local authority and others have to be on the front foot in? having a dialogue with developers, for example, uh, because there is this general trend towards the de de relaxation of, the, of, of planning rules, um, deregulation, if you like. So if you sit back and see what happens, we could end up with, yes, some different uses, which no doubt uh, will be market, market led and respond to a market demand, but actually won't ultimately create a place where people really would want to work or live or mm. shop or whatever. So, you know, taking the, the Debenhams example and, and, and thankfully the, the, the scheme being, that's been proposed there does retain shop frontages, but you know, that could have been a door and no frontage. Um, so I guess the key is to have those conversations and to have a, a vision, if you like, for, for what the city centre could be like that encourages diversity and flexibility whilst not creating somewhere that ultimately doesn't appeal to people. Yeah, and, and, and I have um, huge sympathy for Leeds City Council and all local authorities who whose hands have been tied behind their backs by government through 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 the relaxation of the rules on permitted development rights for residential conversions and I've never been convinced around about what problem government is seeking to solve there because people could still convert buildings through the normal planning uh, have a change of use through the nor the normal um, planning planning process. And, and you know, I, I I think it's a very disempowering move for for central government um, in in terms of um, you know devolution and 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 and, and but also a very re retrograde move in in place shaping for the reasons you 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 you, you and Linda have, um, have have suggested. Um, I mean, I think there is a um, a question about how can the public sector work together with the development industry to create the right conditions, um, the right sort of public-private packages of financial support um, to, um, to promote really good quality um, um, residential um, development in the city centre, but also actually in other sort of sustainably located 
um, places um, 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 around around the city. I think through the Leeds Living Initiative, which has sort of merged into West Yorkshire Brownfield Fund, Leeds City Council have done a really good job in in, in working with the industry in identifying some of the public realm um, and place shaping improvements that can be brought forward um, to kind of help make a market in terms of de-risking uh, um, um, schemes. I, I think Homes England have, 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 have a role um, to play here. I, my own view is I'd like to see an emphasis on quality there. You know, I think there's a deal that could be struck between the public sector and, and the private sector, which is, you know, we, we will help facilitate and invest to bring forward good quality schemes. But we want to, we want to see quality in terms of design and 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 and, 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 and play shaping um, um and you know um and and i suspect that that's probably that's probably the future way of sort of tackling that issue you, you've mentioned place making a few times and um of course we're seeing now in the city center um various interventions some of them uh, public transport led, um, so the changes around the corn exchange are, are really about public, improving public transport uh, routes and facilities. Um, we have the, the new city park on the south bank coming, coming on stream before too long. Um, we have city square being, being closer through traffic uh, in the next couple of years and the, the shortlisted uh, scheme has just been announced um, to, um, you know, to create a, a much larger and um, hopefully more more attractive and pleasant square. Um, so where do you think, I mean, th th there's placemaking by developers. Um, so, so ensuring that the settings of new builds uh, are attractive, they link up to other places, all of those sorts of things, which is partly, um, uh, you know, partly something that, that the developer has to propose and partly something that the, the local authority has to insist upon, I suppose. But then there are those public interventions, if you like, that where, where the, the, the power lies really with the, with the council, with the city council. So how do you, do you see, what role do you see, for the, uh, of what, what is the council's role in improve, improving public wellness in the centre, do you think? Well, I think clearly the council has a, lead, a leadership role here and and uh, i think the council again should be commended um for building our um um for the work they've done over over, over recent years um and you know um so so that, that you know that i think there was some sort of tactical interventions um you know i remember the initial sort of summer closures of greek street or cookridge street being you know put it it's essentially putting some bollards up and laying a bit of astroturf on cookridge street and putting some tables out on greek street um, um but um but 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 that they, they've built on that and i think with the um ambition demonstrated in the R spaces strategy that they produce mm -hmm. um, for high quality public realm in in in, in the city center that the progress they're making in relation to um, the air park on the the, the the Tetley site but also the improvements to um, Meadow Lane and the new footbridge at Sovereign Square to link it through to Sovereign Square and the station um um the the city square scheme and we're, we're part of the reform led um 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 team that's that's won that competition um the scheme um for the for the corn exchange and 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 and, and so on it, it, that that's that's kind of quite an impressive list of um improvements i think there's also sort of some small scale improvements so you know outside our office so for those of you who don't know we're, we're located in a, um, a former flax mill opposite the royal armories there was um the riverside path sort of previously deteriorated into a muddy kind of mess and that's you know about a couple of years ago was properly tarmacked and you know the number of people now using that and the diversity of people, you know, kids on bikes, older people going for walks, office workers or residents going for a run. Um, um, it's been wonderful to see. So sometimes it's 
the 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 smaller scale stuff. So I think there's there's a lot to 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 celebrate um, um, here. Some of this um, these schemes don't come cheap, um, and I think um, and sometimes it's difficult to justify or make the economic case for these schemes um, in the context of how we appraise transport projects. Um, and so I think, um, you know, I, I, I think that's a challenge. Um, 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 I think, but I think the economic benefits of the, these schemes are, are, are massive and, and I'd like to see them prioritise more in transport um, decision making, in, in particularly in the way sort of WICA and DFT um, um, consider, consider um, improvements. I think looking ahead, I would sort of um, pose um, um, a bit of a challenge um, 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 in maybe sort of three areas, actually. One is, and, and probably most importantly, um, Leeds City Centre is surrounded by a, a series of residential neighbour neighbourhoods, um, you know, um, New Wortley, Holbeck, Hunslet, um, Richmond Hill, um, um, Little London, Hyde Park, um, um, parts of Kirkstall, and so on, which, which have some, you know, um, high levels of deprivation. Um, and I think some of those neighbourhoods are are cut off from the city centre, partly through a sort of lack of awareness or lack of um, access to opportunities um, in terms of skills and employment, but also physical severance. Um, and and I, must, I sometimes sit in our office here and watch kids from Richmond Hill trying to navigate the dual carriageway of East Street and get across the river to go to um, Gorse on the South Bank and, and, yes. and ditto going the, going the other way. Um, and I think there's something about uh, what is what are the kind of public realm um, and connectivity improvements we need to reconnect some of those neighbourhoods um, with, with, with with parts of the city centre, and 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 uh, address those issues of severance. And I think the concept of the fifteen minute city, which I think has some limitations but also has some benefits, could apply to parts of the city centre in that respect. So another example would be. Um, you know, um, if, if you if you look at that sort of corridor, um, sort of from um, if you go to uh, you know um, it, from Ellen Road through to the Matthew Murray site, the the recreations in in the Holbeck, Holbeck Mall, um, is then cut off from the sort of regeneration area around Temple Works by the railway at Nivena Road, and there's a proposal for a footbridge there, and then sort of following that through um, across the river and the canal uh, into um, the West End Office District, where again, the, I know there's a proposal for a canal bridge which could take the district heating system. I think those are the sort of initiatives we need to now be, be bringing forward. The other two briefly I would mention, um, I still feel the waterfront is a massive underutilized asset for Leeds. You know, we're, we're on the water um, 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 here. You know, I, I think it could create creates an opportunity to create this fantastic linear park for, 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 for the city. And, you know, I, I, I think that's a real opportunity. It won't be an easy one to crack. Um, so no, I'm not saying no. it's easy. And then the other one is um, the innovation district around the universities and, 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 and the LGI, which feels at the moment quite a discombobulated bit of town. And, and again, I, th I think a series of public realm improvements um, there. Um, but it's easy to say these things and, you know, there, there are limits um, to the amount of investment available and, and some of these are long term proposals. And I, I do think the City Council have been doing a great job recently, um, 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 as I said earlier, in terms of some of the projects they've been bringing forward. Well, that's that's, a, that's a, a really, really good answer. I think, you know, I think I would certainly share, um, you know, I think that the, 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 your sort of list of three there are all are all really important things. And it's, it feels like these are the next areas that the, the council needs to be getting its teeth into and um, you know we, we certainly support that at the trust. 
Um, I've got a couple of final questions before we finish, Tom. Uh, just a, a question on major employers, of which Arup is one, um, but I'm thinking particularly about companies that have, uh, and organisations that have come into the city recently, Channel 4, the National Infrastructure Bank has just come in. Um, so organisations, if you like, that are new to the, new to town, if you like. Um, you know, what role do you think those new incoming um, organisations, what role do they play in supporting the economy more generally? So not just employing people themselves, but and not even thinking about their immediate supply chain, but thinking about the broader economy that they support. And do you think that there's a sort of responsibility on employers to, to support that? Yeah, I do actually. Um, um, you know, I I, I think um, businesses and um, major employers benefit from being part of the city, um, and um, you know, and 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 um, and I I think it's important that they also contribute to the civic life of of the city. I would identify three areas, um, um, Martin. I, I I think first of all. I do think that organisations have a bit of a responsibility in terms of supporting um, the, their, their local economies. And I, and I think getting people back into the city centre and back into offices um, um, will be um, important there. And, and, and um, you know, it's important in its own right, but it has those spin-off benefits in terms of footfall and spend. And, you know, personally, it's a personal view. That is a concern I have about this hybrid um, 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 model. I think secondly they have a role as part of the wider ecosystem um, that, are, so that can create innovation and entrepreneurship so we've been really proud to participate and sponsor the um, 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 MIT REAP initiative that the University of Leeds have led. We're, 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 we're a sponsor of North Invest, which connects um, technology-driven startups with um, angel investors um, 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 that was founded by Adam Beaumont. Um, and you know, we're, we're a member of Leeds Community Foundation and I'm a trustee there. Um, but I think um, the, you know, the evidence shows that really successful um, ecosystems that commercialize innovation have a number of different actors. They have corporates such as ourselves, they have the public sector, um, you know, major government functions, they have universities and other large knowledge producing organizations. Critically, they have entrepreneurs um, yeah. um, and, and uh, you know, often entrepreneurs are forgotten here and they have the investors of risk capital. And the evidence is you need those five stakeholder groups to work together in a way that's more than the sum of their parts. So I think large employers, whether they're in the public and private sector, have a role and a responsibility to help stimulate that sort of ecosystem to work with um, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I've noticed um, today KPMG have just um, signed um, a major partnership agreement with the University of Leeds to work with the university but also work with startups and scale-ups. I think that's fantastic and you know I, I know other firms are doing similar um, um, but that's the sort of thing um, um, that, that, that I think organisations such as, such as ourselves um, um, should, should be doing and I think the public sector have a role here in terms of um, the way they work with their supply chains, the way they can bring together innovators and entrepreneurs and corporates around some of the big challenges we, we face as a city, as a nation, as part of a sort of mission-led approach to um, innovation, the way they structure their procurement. I think the third area is also just the role organisations, large employers can have in, in, in terms of their recruitment, their training and their procurement. Um, the Leeds Inclusive Anchors program, which again the City Council has driven, has really sort of really best practice in that respect. Um, that's focused, I think, with the exception of Yorkshire Water, predominantly on public sector or higher education or health organisations. But I think you know the, the business community um, um, should be thinking about their their role as an inclusive employer, the apprenticeship agenda, school engagement. Um, where they buy their goods and services, issues like the living wage, um, yeah. they're volunteering. And I think as a business community in the city, we could do more 
and, and do more in a more structured and coherent way here. Tom, we've covered a lot of ground and um, we're, we're sort of running out of time. So I just wanted to finish, if, if I may, with one final uh, question, which is sort of taking everything that you've said on board. Could you just give us a bit of a, paint a bit of a picture, if you like, of uh, Leeds uh, City Centre in five years, 10 years time? You know, what, how will we experience it? What will be different? Um, how will we access it? What, 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 do you, what do you think, where do you think we'll be in a few years time? Well, I'm optimistic is the first thing um, I, I, I would say, um, because I, I, you know, as, as I said earlier, I think the benefits of high densities of face to face interaction um, in city centres um, are, are massive. And, and, and I think um, and I think as we come out of COVID, people will crave that social interaction and, um, you know, smart, creative people want to work alongside other smart creative people um, 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 so I, I think you know the city centre is a hub for the knowledge economy um, um, it will it, it, it will maintain its, it, it, its position and it might even strengthen its position because actually you know the primary reason you will come into the city centre will not be to sort of sit behind a desk, but it will be to collaborate. It will be to create, um, um, and it will be to 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 innovate. Um, um, so I'm I'm optimistic about the future of the city centre. I, I I think the city centre will be have a more diverse and intermingled mix of users. I think it will be less a retail district, an office district, and a civic district, and a university mm -hmm. district. It'll be become more of a mashup actually yeah. of of um you know office space, lab space. You know, we're, we're seeing big investments like LabCorp going into Draper's Yard next to Temple Works. Um education space, public services, health, eds and meds, resi good residential. So so I, I think it will be a, a, a more a more sort of intermingled, diverse mix of users. Um, I think um, I think it might be a more vibrant place. Um, and and I think as as you know with, with economic shocks and 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 um, um, and, and sort of organisations moving out, come opportunities. So you know, uh, I think entrepreneurs, creatives, um, um, you know, could 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 have opportunities. The role of culture in program in the city centre and the spaces um, 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 ha has an important role. I think it will be a more livable and greener place, partly as a, a you know as as a result of that continued program of public realm um, 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 and investment. And remember, concentrated development in city centres is more sustainable um, um, that, than um, dispersed um, um, development. Um, we have HS two on its way. Do you think by then? I hope we have HS two on. C committed um, 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 I certainly think um, you know um, a good quality public transport system and network of walking and cycling routes is 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 critical to supporting the functioning of of, of the city center I think finally uh, I'd hope it's a more accessible place in terms of some of the communities in in Leeds and Leeds city re region both in terms of physical accessibility and we talked about those issues of severance but also ac access to the opportunities it can create um, so I, I I I think you know city city centers have been written off in 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 the past but actually if you look back in history you know you look to the Leeds Improvement Act of 1842 you look to when George Gilbert Scott and Florence Nightingale designed the Leeds General um, Infirmary actually Leeds has evolved and innovated um, and bounced back from previous health crises I think the city has a diverse economy it has some real strengths it has excellent business and civic leadership and I think it's got the building box to bounce back again and, and perhaps be a more diverse place that's focused on creativity and innovation, not just consumption. Well, Tom, that's a great uh, way to end this uh, uh, session. We've uh, covered an awful lot of ground and I think lots of food for thought. So uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. 
Um, and thank you all for, for listening in. We will be uh, putting this on uh, our YouTube channel when we've had a chance to process it. But uh, yeah, just um, once again, Tom, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed it. it yeah, f f thank you, Martin. And thank you to you and all your Civic Trust colleagues for the great work you're doing in promoting leads and promoting you know having these the, these debates um i think i think it's an important discussion to be be having and i think there's no right or wrong answers you know it will be fascinating to see what happens over the next few years but i think the civic trust have a really important voice and role to play that's great good to hear okay thank you all thanks very much tom and i'll see you all soon thanks thanks bye-bye